So welcome All back right. to a new Salceros podcast. We're here with Saltandi Dance. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Talk about you guys, yeah. what you guys do. What Absolutely. You guys about. So my name is Jahaira. Nice to be here on the set. Um, and yeah, I'm one of the founders of our Saltandi Dance. And we'll talk about like the style and everything uh, later in this podcast. <laughs> my name's Ross. Um, yeah, we founded uh, Saltani Dance a couple of years ago, I guess, mm-hmm. two years yeah, ago. Actually. So we're, a, we're an urban, urban kids dance company. Uh, it started out just the two of us, but we've, uh, we've been growing. So we have a slow, we have a team for the last couple months since we've started. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And my name's Antonio, and then we also have... Oh, yeah, Jose. I am Will. I am Will. <laughs> I am Will. All right. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about what you guys are about. First of all, what is urban kids? Because a lot of people don't know what urban kids... I think we, our population, the people that we talk to, is mainly like bachata and like pe- bachata and salsa people. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people sometimes don't know what urban kids is or even what kizomba is. I know we previously we had talked about it. So what's your guys' take on it? What do you guys think about it? Or do you guys know anything about it? So. Yeah, you want to go give them a little bit of the background? Yeah. So there's a difference between kizomba and urban kiss. Yes. We we'll make that very clear. And we dance and teach urban kids. So kizomba is a dance and a style of music that comes from Angola and other Portuguese-speaking uh, countries in Africa, mm-hmm. okay? Urban kids has kizomba fundamentals, basics, and, and movements in it, but they took the kizomba dance and started doing it to more modern uh, music. Ghetto Zouk was the first type of different music, and that comes from France. Mm-hmm. So now you hear urban kids, it's got a, a much more hip-hop, R&B, mm-hmm. rap, feel to the music but the dance itself looks distinctly different as well yeah it's also been fused with a lot of other styles of dance like tango like a lot of hip-hop has been influenced in it popping. so mm-hmm. yeah popping yes oh, really? mm-hmm. popping like is popping. really popular yeah in urban kids yeah but they are different i do think that um in if you're not in that specific dance scene right from so com- looking from the outside you kind of group them all together as, oh, they're, it's a kizomba dance, right? Yeah. Or sometimes they call it kizomba <clears throat> fusion. And we, yeah. you know, we market ourselves specifically to teach urban kids with a K-I-Z, yeah. right? Because also when I say urban kids, people think I s- teach urban children, right? Yeah. Like, urban oh. kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting because uh, even though they're different dances and urban kids comes from kizomba, uh, we're still in the same scene if that's what you want to call it or industry yeah Mm -hmm. so like i don't know what a more appropriate umbrella term would be but some people would say like kizomba if you say it in like a universal covers all of the styles yeah because there's actually a lot of styles within the industry beyond those two Mm -hmm. right so there's kizomba there's semba which is another um african dance Mm -hmm. i believe it comes from angola there's urban kiz then there's components to those, which you'll see is Tarasha, which is something totally different, but it's like a, a subset. In like if you see a lot of people just like kind of standing in place and they have a lot of like intricate, just body upper movements bo- here body or, movement. yeah, mm-hmm. then that it's technically different, right. right? And then it creates like even more derivatives like Tarashinya, tar- like Tarasho. So, tarasho. Yeah. So you can take pieces of it and include it into other, like, urban kids. Like, that's what Tarashinya is. Uh-huh. It's when you start having, like, hip isolations. And, and there's, again, a whole separate set of technique that you can influence into your urban kids dancing. But it's, like, all, it has its own uniqueness and instructors that are yeah. trained in those styles. Yeah. And we're not even talking about Zouk, right? That no. Do yeah. With yeah. Like, <laughs> it's completely separate. It's a whole different so, world. Yeah, because yeah. I, I know, like, the bachata and salsa scene, like, I feel like a lot of times we're just like, oh, like, we're going to go All to the, the other stuff. kids and, kids yeah, and Zouk group group. room. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, they do group them together. together. You when, like, totally in reality, right. it's, like, two separate things, and yeah. even within themselves, they have their own subdivision, so. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Dope. Well, the thing with the, the thing, the reason why they're so connected is because a lot of the music overlaps between Brazilian Zouk, mm-hmm. which is specific, Brazilian Zouk and Urban Kiss. Yeah. So they both dance, can be, can danced, be danced, to ghetto Zouk music. Yes. Oh. Yeah, That's as long as the think. BPMs allow for it. If yeah. it's like a slow enough song that you would dance Urban Kiss to and also dance B Zouk or Brazilian Zouk to, then it's perfect, right? But sometimes that does, that's not always the case, yeah. too. Some yeah. Urban Kiss specific kind of songs 
are too fast to mm-hmm. want to actually do the basic and be zook. Be zook, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's like, yeah, it's it's completely separate, right. but yeah, I do understand why they do link it together yeah. in in a festival or something that only has social. like two or three rooms. Mm-hmm. They want to be inclusive, yeah. and so they give us a room, yeah. right? The the problem the problem though is when you try and put urban kids and bizuk in the same room. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the DJs will take a really good Urban Kids song and then they were slow the BPM down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now you're dancing Urban Kids really slowly. So and it's like, uh, yeah, it's like watered down. It's not like the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At and least that's our opinion, that's right? That's our opinion. Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes you go to these mixed rooms and that are supposed to be mixed, but then since Urban Kids, at least where we are, isn't as popular, people just end up dancing Bizook. And now the, the kids people are out, out zooked at their own stuff. And it's like, ah, uh, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also the way, like, again, like, every style has its own things that they're they're known for. Like, Urban Kids is not a big dance, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you, you dance big, but more commonly, it's small steps, right? Close connections, or you kind of, Sharp. like, walking and doing things together versus, like, mm-hmm. I've also trained in, in Bizook, like, mm-hmm. not extensively, but you travel, right? That's the essence of the basic is you're traveling forward, traveling back, right? This give and take. And so it just naturally takes up a lot more space yeah. in a room, right? In a, in a dance room. So if you have those two dances combined, all of a sudden yeah. all the urban kids people are kind of stuck in this one little <laughs> corner. Right. And yeah. the bizooks are, you know, yeah. dancing everything or taking over, right? But yeah. that makes sense because it's a yeah. different dance. It's a different dance. Yeah. Well, that's dope. Yeah. What, what, what are some, uh, I know, so you guys are in both worlds, you know, you guys, like, we met you through QC, you guys, and, uh, mm-hmm. you guys dance bachata, salsa. Um, what are some common misconceptions, you know, for people out there that you guys, like, come across a lot about mm-hmm. Zook and Kisomba that mm-hmm. you guys would like to talk about? Oh, yeah, I, I will, I'll start off. Sure. <laughs> the sure. first thing is, like, well, one, uh, if you're a salsa or bachata dancer and you hear, oh, I, I dance, Urban Kids, Kizomba, Zook, anything like that, uh, they're like, oh, are they different? Or are they the same dance? That's usually the first one I get. They can't tell the difference. Yeah. Uh, or they think it's just grinding, like right close to one yeah. another, like club gr- club dancing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Which it's not. Or, that, you know, that it's, uh, you're just, there's no technique to it. You're just mm. dancing near each other. When it is, I think it's, in my opinion, more complicated than any of the other dances. Mm. So, well, that's, you know, that's me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's common for, it's common for non-Kizomba dancers to go into the, you know, the kids' room, the Kizomba room, and then just kind of stand there and get really close and think that that's the dance. Yeah. But there's so much that. micro technique mm-hmm. in the way the hips move. It's way more complicated than that. Yeah. You know? Like, we train yeah. so, so that our hips are moving like this. Like, yeah. m- micro. M- micro movements. Yeah. And it's harder to do that than it is to do pew, pew, yeah. like these huge hip thrusts. Yeah, pe- people say that a lot. Like all you guys do is stand around and the- I go into the kids' room and everyone's just standing. No, yeah. <laughs> people say that. Everyone's just standing. Yeah. But that's I not true. Not it's, a part, it's part of it, but it's not true. Because I'll, I'll be watching some videos uh, and then I'll be like, whoa, like I know there's so much going on in there. Because I know as like, a, like in bachata, like the subtleties are so important to me as a dancer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I know, like looking at Zook and or just looking at the the kids the kids room, uh, I see them standing and and they're there's it's like more like vibrations mm-hmm. in the dance versus like I know some other person that doesn't have that eye, they'll probably just be just being like, oh, what are they doing? Like they're just right like like yeah. frozen or something. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so you mentioned that you like uh, you think it's a lot more complicated. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Um, so like, I, again, right, it, it's hard to see that when you're like just looking at two people dancing, like urban kids in, in a Kizomba room, especially because it's dark too in the dancing, right? Um, but one of the things that I don't know if everyone realizes is the styles of dances that we're used to, like salsa, bachata, even bizook, they have a basic, right? They have on count one and count three, you're supposed to be doing this move or this move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In urban kids, there's no assumption, right? You can start with your right foot. You can start with your left foot. You can start forward, to this side, in place. Like, you have absolutely, whether it's from the lead perspective or from the follow perspective, what the next move is going to look like. Yeah. And because of that, you have to be 100% connected 
to whoever you're dancing with, mm -hmm. right? And so all of a sudden now, if I know as a lead, I'm not starting with my left foot anymore, I could start with my right, you have to make sure that you're leading that correctly with every essence of your body. And to me, that's why, that's why it's harder, right? We can start on not one, but on count seven. Yeah, we can pause. We can pause. What do, what do most people tell you when you're like lost in a social dance? Mm -hmm. They say, find your basic. Find your basic. Yeah. There's no base. There's there's basic steps, but there's not a basic you can find again. Yeah. In in the early kids. Yeah, that's why it's so connection based. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say that. Yeah. And and that's why we like it because there's a lot of freedom mm -hmm. to interpret the music exactly yeah. the way you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like my type of dance. Like, oh, <laughs> I think so. Like, oh, you should yeah. come to our yeah. class. Wednesday yeah. and Thursdays, bro. Yeah. Wednesday yeah. and Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, I got my chat to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to add real quick. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I know for, for me, like, I hear that. I know it was, I had a lot of uh, um, trouble, like, dancing salsa. Mm -hmm. Just because it was, it was, you know, there's the rules and the structure within it. Cause I I uh, I learned cumbia from like my parents are from Mexico. They kind of dance like that. It's just very free. Yeah. There's no basic per se. It's just you just you really have to tune into the to the music, and yeah. you you grow like the the ear to like okay I'm tuning into this step or this beat or whatever. Right. And and so your follow, they have like their own basic, but it's not a like there's no general consensus of a basic. It's yeah. just very. Mm -hmm. So it, it really sounds like that to me. Like how you guys are explaining it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's sure. like you really have to feel it. And that's why, like, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of, like, the dance love languages. Mm -hmm. um, but can, you, can you explain, yeah, explain that? What, what is that? <laughs> yes. This is, yeah. this is interesting. Wait a minute. <laughs> you said love. No, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. I know, right? <laughs> so, like, there's, there's in the non-dance world, right, there's, like, the normal love languages, which is how you express and receive love, right, mm -hmm. which they, has its own things, but dancers have taken that information and have created dance love languages, which is when you dance with someone, it doesn't matter what the style is, the way, the best connection you're going to get with someone is someone who also is giving you your specific dance love language, yeah. right? Do you know all of them? No, I don't, but I know a handful of them. So do, which ones do you know? Uh, there's like musicality, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, you, you enjoy hitting the right parts of the music. There's playfulness, so like, do you have just like a lot of fun? Mm -hmm. There's a uh, challenge, challenging yeah. or challenger or something like that, yeah. which is like you like to be challenged and try hard stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's okay. connection might be one of them or something. Similar. There's like well, ones where you're like. You're not doing anything overly I think, complicated. I think connection is one. You can, yeah. you can look it up, but there's like seven or eight of them. So we got the yeah. laptop. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's funny because, um, like, to me, I know that mine is expression. Oh, My dance expression. love language is expression, where people give me space. Like, yes, like, it's cool to do super complicated stuff, and I definitely think that's Ross's dance mm -hmm. love language. Well, he like gets happy. Is that, yeah. Is yeah. That he loves to be, like, whether it's salsa or anything, like, if he gets, like, a whole, like, a really complex pattern done to completion with whoever he's dancing with, he gets happy. You see him smiling, yeah. like, when he's dancing. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. But for me, I think my dance love language is being able to be musical and express, expressive with my partner, right? Which not everyone can do that because sometimes it can be disruptive, right? Mm -hmm. If someone is trying to do something more complicated yeah. and then I'm trying to you know, like hit something in the song, right? I'm gonna miss like a, a move or some, uh, a lead, but that's because I want that space to, to dance, express, right? yeah. to express. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I relate to that for sure. Cause yeah. I know for me, like my dance style, I, I guess it kind of switches. I feel like it would switch between, you know, I, I love, um, giving at least in bachata or even in salsa i'm trying to get incorporate that mm -hmm. now too uh just like not doing anything basically just do like a basic in place yeah. not too much body movement but just let my follow just like express themselves yeah, yeah. it's like uh, i think if people could if were to visualize this it's i basically stop doing um any moves mm -hmm. and then i separate i give them like space literal physical physical space and then they can do like their own little like thing that they want to do. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But some people hate that. 
Yeah, right? It's so funny. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Yeah, yeah what am I supposed right to do? I'm like, yeah. I guess I'll just stand here and wait for you to lead me again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, like, so, for me, like, I thrive in that when does. when I get that space and I'm like, all right, perfect. Ooh, I'm oh, about yeah. to, like, ready to hit this one part of the song. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I'm like, just like your own, like, salsa, like your own little space right there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay. We, uh, we definitely, we don't speak the same love language. Uh, yeah. For <laughs> dance, no. Yeah. Yeah. For dance, we don't no. speak the same dance love language. Yeah, no, no, no. but I think well, because I know of them, I try to tell him like, "Hey, give me some space, mm, like yeah. space to dance." And oh, then he like, "Oh, okay, yeah, you're right." Yeah, she said that to me yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, it's actually really good because it forces us to be able to work on the things that maybe we don't mm -hmm. we don't pursue when we dance. Mm -hmm. So. Because I'm so technical focused and that's what I like. He is, yeah. She will say, "Hey, like, give me some space," and it's just a real constant reminder. Hey, I need to make sure that the followers are having their space, mm -hmm. you know, so that they can enjoy themselves. Yeah. And and that way I can work on that aspect of the dance. It's hitting the music correctly, you know, giving the space at the right time and all that stuff. So it's good to have someone that challenges you and you know forces you to work on the the opposite of maybe what you what yeah. you normally do. Yeah. For sure. That's awesome because I, I know he had a, you were, you were, I mean, I was thinking in terms of, because like I'm married too and I have my wife and we dance mm -hmm. and it's, it's interesting to see, like I think we have a very similar dance love language, Yeah. but I often wonder, you know, like there's times where, how would it be, I, I don't want to just dance one specific way, I don't, like right. I want to feel that challenge of like, yo, like, you know, for me, I, 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 I don't really like sequencing too much, mm -hmm. I think it, for me it's like, um, sometimes I lose the connection with the song itself because uh, I want to yeah, emphasize yeah. The, the, sequence. the sequence. But sometimes when you hit the sequence in the right time, I'm like, yeah, 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 like yeah, that, yeah. that was so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. For real. So I think each one has their things. Did you find them? Yeah, yeah. yeah so awesome. they're energy, deep mm. connection, challenge, mm. playfulness, expression, mm. and creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. So my, mine were challenge and creativity when I did the test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a test for it? Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah. there's a test, yeah. Yeah, there's always a test for everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 If you're a dancer and you're listening to this, take the test, take the quiz. You guys mentioned about um, you uh, being a couple in the dancing. Like, how is that? Like, because I know, well, first of all, you guys are a couple in the dancing. On top of that, you guys run a company as a, as a couple. So mm -hmm. it's, how does that work? And also, like, there's a lot of like stigmas on in that so yeah. what do you guys think what do, what do you how do you guys think the how do you guys work that out too because i mean you guys spend a lot of time together too so. yeah yeah we do we do definitely <laughs> i think that was uh i think a hard le lesson we really had to learn was to try and create that separation just like as if we were like business partners in like a regular eight to five job right anything that's business related like you have to leave it in your place of business and then you know business Jahir and Ross is over for this moment now we're just regular Jahir and Ross right when we yeah. go to our home and all that stuff because for a while it, it, it got like complicated because we would train and then we would get frustrated with each other I'm like well why aren't you doing this or you know you, you know yeah. I was right you were I, you, you were wrong <laughs> <laughs> and I think we had to have that conversation early on like okay if we want to do this and make something like in the Phoenix scene or just just for us like it had to stop at the studio right and not not take those uh, issues into our home yeah and then we've also been better about like assigning roles like who's going to be in charge of this like organizing scheduling like who's going to create the choreos like all those things like if we had those conversations or so we'll, I'll say uh, if we didn't have those conversations it would have led to more issues Right. Yeah. right. So I feel like we're in, in a really good place in yeah. our personal lives and in our like business life. Yeah, I think the hard part right now is <clears throat> the hardest part is making sure that you find time outside of dance to just be yeah. as a couple. Yeah. So get like we get to the point now where we schedule time where we're like, hey, we're not dancing. We're going to go do this. Yeah. You know, last night we went we went to a, like a pub. Yeah, it was an English pub. An English pub. Mm -hmm. and it was like. This is our time. We're going to, you know, we talked to business a little bit yeah. mm -hmm. at the beginning, but then we stopped. Yeah, we literally put our phones away. We and we're like, hey, away. let's not look at our phones. Let's not, like, look at yeah. dance videos. We do that all the time with each other. Like, yeah. let's just enjoy this moment and stuff. So, yeah. What, what other things do you guys do, like, 
to kind of because then you guys said like you guys try to find time away from each other right mm -hmm. what other things do you guys do to to kind of have your own time like our own individual time or yeah yeah own? your own oh, individual yeah. time that's a good one i feel like i uh a lot of my job i do get to work remote most of the time so i get my alone time during the day um and usually when he gets back from work like that will be mostly his alone time but if we need to like physically be away from each other because we just we just need that time right to regenerate, usually I'll go visit my family. <laughs> That's usually how, a good thing for me. And they live like 40 minutes away, so I'll go with them, hang out with them, and like to me that just like resets my battery for everything that that we try to do. Yeah. We used to work out together a lot, and we yeah. don't. So that's like my time away. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I go to the that's gym. true. Is that yeah. was that intentional? Just let's not work out together. Uh, it just a, it just kind of happened Schedules. that way, but it was just like we were doing, you know, uh, yeah. mostly everything together and then yeah. scheduling and stuff. So it's just the nature of my job usually yeah. starts later in the like uh, early afternoon, like from basically noon on, versus his his job is more standard standard eight to five. Yeah. So I'll, I'll usually work out in the morning, like early, early in the yeah. morning. Yeah, the thing is you have to be really intentional. And like, yeah. if, you, if you dance with your partner and you direct a company and you have jobs and you're traveling and all this stuff, is you just have to be intentional about when you schedule your time on your own and when yeah. you schedule your time together. It's got to be like it's some, you know, even people say, oh, romance has to be like spontaneous. Uh, spontaneous. <laughs> and it's like, well, no, we're going to plan on this day. We're going to go out yeah. on a date. And that's, you know, that's our date. Night. Yeah. Like, Maybe if we didn't have so many things going on, then it, we could be spontaneous. Yeah. But if not, if we don't schedule it, it's not going to happen, right? Yeah. And that's, that's the truth. Working against us rather yeah. than for us. Yeah, right. I think that's a very like, uh, in I don't know. Just I heard that a lot. You know, it has to be spontaneous. I think mm. it's, uh, I don't know if it's part of the culture or something, but. Yeah. Uh, I always said, like, if you schedule it out, I think the spontaneity comes from the activity itself. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for sure. Yeah. So there's that element to it too. Did you want to, um, I actually, ha I actually did have a question. Did no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, so you said what, what you want to do, like, like come back, you know, like a few minutes. You mentioned that, you know, we, we, you guys had this conversation, like, if we want to do this in Phoenix, we, this is how we have to do it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so can you guys talk about what exactly do you guys want to do, like, in Phoenix? Like, what is, you know, what mm -hmm. is the movement about, basically? Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay, I'll start. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, well, I mean... Before COVID, right, the urban kids and Kizomba scene was pretty was doing a lot better, um, and even though there was like, you know, ins and outs with that community, there was still like a good number of people. But once COVID hit, it really just destroyed the dance scene that we had, which again wasn't that large, but it basically dwindled it to just skeleton individuals, right? Who even to this day are still with us. Um, but because of that, and I had already started dancing, like I taught Ross the basics of urban kids. And from that, like that lit a fire in him already. He was already a dancer, so <laughs> it worked. And I caught him and he's been like on like this whole journey of trying to learn in his own style, which is awesome. Um, but because our, our dance scene basically was nothing, we've really been trying to build it using community aspects, like the people who have been there for a long time, DJs, instructors, anyone who is willing to like put in the hard work with us, like that's what we've been like, like trying to do. And it's been growing, which has been great. And then to just kind of like push us even more, right? Uh, Ross like really had this idea of like wanting to start a dance company. And I was like, I told, I was honest with him, like, I don't know if it's gonna, like if that's really gonna happen. But I mean, if you've ever met Ross, he's like the most determined <laughs> individual and driven person like I've ever met. So he's like, no, we're gonna do this. Like we can do this. And we've just been training for years at this point to get to this position. And like, we're starting to see like the fruit of all the labor yeah. that we've been it's like, pushing for. It's like the stuff that we've done. Like right now it feels like the company and the, the movement and the community here in Phoenix is just kind of really gaining traction, but it was like mm. two years of, of really work. hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Under, underneath before that even happened. So, yeah. Um, you know, for months we used to have like two people in our classes mm -hmm. and now we have like 15, 16. 
consistently. Consist- consistent. right, right, right. Consistently. Consistently. Yeah. And consistently the same people. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas before we get two of these people, two dropping people, in. Two people yeah. dropping mm-hmm. in. So. And it's hard, right? Dropping yeah. classes, like you have to reset, you know, teach the basic again yeah. and again right. and again. Yeah. But now we have people that we, because they're, they're our students or have been our students or they've worked in the community with us, like they know their basics. And now we can push them to be mm-hmm. like better dancers. Yeah. And that, that's how you get a community, like, running. And it also helps that they're awesome people and they're all friends, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, we're all working together and they also have this huge drive to build the community with us. Yeah. So, like, at the end of the day, like, we, we're doing this because we like to, you know, we want to impact people and we want to teach people and stuff. Yeah. We're doing it through building a community. And the truth is, is, like, people are, are attracted to different types of dance for different reasons, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, when we started, there weren't, wasn't that many kids dancers, but it attracts certain types of people and things. And, and now we're seeing that there is there is a healthy amount of people here in Phoenix that, that want to do this that style specifically. You know, we've had people on our teams and our classes that say, this is my favorite. Like yeah. I've been dancing salsa bachata for years and it's like, but this one just speaks to yeah. me so much more. So, you know, we, that's kind of our goal. We want to be out there. We want to build it so we can dance this dance more frequently here. Mm-hmm. So we can be big enough to attract other artists from out of state and have them come here and celebrate and teach and instruct. Yeah. Um, because there's just so many good things around, you know, the country that, that yeah. you know, sometimes it's annoying you have to travel for. So right. let's just try and bring mm-hmm. it here. Yeah, and we started out with doing weekly classes in collaboration um, with our group that we call Desert Kids, K-I-Z. Yeah. Um, and then we still are doing those weekly classes, which I love because we get to work collaboratively with Mm -hmm. the community. And then in addition to that, we started our first season of our team a couple of months ago. And do you want to tell them like what the point of that team? The point of the team. Yeah. Okay, so. Because it's different. It's It's like when you think of a dance team, you think of like choreo. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you guys on QC, you you do choreos, right? Right. Right, That's mostly your season. Yeah. You learn, you learn how to, (laughs) you learn how to social dance and stuff, but um, a season is usually bookmarked by learning and performing a choreo. Okay, the thing is in the urban kiss scene, choreos are not really highly valued at all. Like mm. they're very mm. rare. Yeah, you don't uh, even see performances or at the, anything yeah. at a specific Kizomba or Urban Kiss festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some some of them don't even have performances mm-hmm. at all. Like a segment for it at all? No. Nope. There's like one festival this year that we're going to, Boston Kizomba Festival, mm-hmm. that does yeah. have shows. They do yeah. they had shows last year. Yeah. But it's Which not a huge awesome. roster. Like if you mm-hmm. go like, we all went to the Vegas Congress recently. Right. And look how many performances there were. There was a ton. Many, many. I'm pretty sure, like, over hundreds. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. There's 50 on that one night. Yeah. yeah. Right? That doesn't happen in Urban Kiss. No, nothing. So it's, 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 there are choreo videos, some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's rare. Yeah. So, like, the mindset of it is just, it's coming from a different place. So this first team that we wanted to focus, like, to create was not going to be a performance-based team, right? Yeah. Instead, mm-hmm. we've been anchoring up all of our students to, like, go to one specific festival because mm-hmm. that's really how we've gotten hooked on this style of dance is attending these this festi- these festivals that are specifically catered to urban kids and Kizomba, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. which is Neo Kids. Yeah, so in place of the festivals, there are Jack and Jill competitions. Mm-hmm. Have you guys heard about those? Yeah. Uh, could you explain it real yeah. quick? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you get you you enter into a Jack and Joe, and you get paired with a random person. In the in the preliminaries, you get paired with random people. Yeah. Um, and it rotates. So you dance maybe ninety seconds with somebody, and you dance ninety seconds with somebody else, and you dance mm-hmm. ninety seconds with somebody else. Yeah. Sometimes it does. They separate them by um, skill like, level. Yeah, by skill level that you can either arbitrarily assign yourself or they assign it for you, depending on how the Jack and Jill is run. But they'll have, like, sometimes, like, different levels. Yeah, novice, intermediate. In, in the advanced Kizoma or... Scene, there's uh, not a lot of advanced No, or divisions. just artist or just ones, artist, ones, artist yeah. level ones, where mm-hmm. the artists will dance with one another yeah. randomly. So, and then you do your preliminaries, and then if you make it to the advanced round, you get paired with one partner, and you dance with them the whole time. You, it's just a couple songs. Yeah. And you can judge as, as a couple. Yeah. So the Jack and Jill for the urban kiss scene really comes from Zook. It's really popular in, in the Brazilian Zook scene. Yeah. Mm. And 
So what we've been doing in the last three months is we've been training our students to go compete in the Jack and Jill. Yeah. So that's our team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And they're uh, excited. They're excited. They're really yeah, right. excited. Like, like, imagine this being your first festival and mm -hmm. you're going to go compete. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. It's like performing because yeah. everyone is there. Like, whoever would be at a performance would, is there in the Jack and Jill. The Jack and Jill are the performances. Oh, so, okay, okay, yeah. Okay. They're, that's, like, you know, yeah. that's what yeah. they're viewed as. So, like, during the days when the students do the Jack and Jill, and then um, on Saturday night, like at Neo Kids this year, Saturday night, they're mm -hmm. having the artists that are hired there to do a mm -hmm. Jack and Jill. Yeah, Just and like they're and so Jill good. Yeah, they're so good. They're so good. Like, yeah. because it's all impromptu. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. even right. know who you're getting paired with until yeah. that moment, specifically. Yeah. Are y'all going to participate? Or? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. We've done every single one we've gone to. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. It's so fun, you know, and it just keeps pushing you, right? Because you're, you're never going to grow if you're stuck doing the same thing over yeah. and over again, right? You have to push yourself. So that's why we've, we've always tried to participate right. in the Jack and Jill's. It's like you, you guys all want to get better at social dancing, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it's because this, this is the exact conversation we had yeah. at uh, San Francisco. Yeah. How do you measure yourself getting better? Yeah. So, just doing it over and over? What do you mean? Yeah, but like, how, how, do, you, how do you quantify, like, hey, I'm yeah. getting, I'm a better dancer? This, for me, it's like connection, like, all right, like, this person, this connection was, the dance was great. It felt great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so is it, like, is it like, I have more g happy Good dancers? Dances. Or is it yeah. I do more patterns? Like there, there isn't a, 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 a like an objectifiable way to say I'm getting better at, at yeah. dancing. Be yeah, because if it's quanti if it has to be quantifiable, that means that the data has to be consistent. But when it comes to feeling, it's so back yeah. and forth, yeah. right? It, it depends on like, did you have a great night before then, or did you have a fight, you know, with someone bef before before yeah. you started social dancing? Like, like all so these things can about. change your perspective, even if it's say the same person, the same dance, mm -hmm. but the the setting is different. That's so right. yeah, like when you when you do choreos, right? You guys train for months on choreos, so you have a, a date that you're like, I'm training for. You'll hold yeah. yourself more accountable, right? So if you do Jack and Jill, you'll hold yourself more accountable. And now all of a sudden, I'm actually training for something. I'm going to be more dedicated to joining a team. I'm going to be more dedicated to going into the studio and working. You know, it's it's oh. it's <laughs> no, 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 we're good. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's good. Okay. So it's like that was that was my the vision we had. Uh, uh, to do it was we need yeah. to give somebody like a date to train for mm. you know and it's like uh, um, it's like you guys did sports growing up like what sports did you play baseball baseball yeah anything uh, nah uh, <laughs> well, track and field track and field, track and field. Yeah. so track and field okay, I didn't do any sports track and field yeah. what, what <laughs> did you do I did pretty much everything 100 meter 200 meter and uh, I don't remember that baton passing one. I don't even know. Oh, oh the yeah. 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 Is so, it called the relay? I think running. Relay. Like, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But like, those are in those are individual things, right? Yeah. But you still train with the team, and you yeah. had a trainer and everything. Right. So it's like, all we really did was take concepts from other areas and just put them in dance that that isn't that haven't really been there consistently. It's like now we have a team that competes at Jack and Jill's. That's awesome. You um, know, all we did was gather people, come up with a lesson plan, get them to go and sign up and throw a branded shirt on them and we have a team. Mm -hmm. I honestly, oh, you know, that is dope. funny because I was, I was literally like in my car just thinking, it would be dope because when you're performing, you're in a team, it's very uh, structured. Yeah. It's like more memorization. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I love watching my teammates dance, social yeah. dance. Yeah. And I want, yeah, I was thinking, I was like, it'd be dope if we had, <laughs> A team where we would just go and and like I'd be able to watch Antonio's social dance and see if he can move up a rank and like yeah. and like Will and like myself and there's a there's like a measurable progress in a way yeah. like some system that can measure that um, and like quantify it and say okay like you know you know you pass this level go on to the next and. Like, it's crazy to me hearing yeah. this now because yeah. I'm like, I was already like, thinking it about should this. exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just yeah. not so much in like salsa bachata unless you go in and compete, maybe. But, right, that, but the that's threshold, different. like, or the yeah. entry point is much harder to get into like bachata and salsa. Like, because yeah. I feel like, because I've seen the Jack and Joe bachata and like salsa, and like a lot of times yeah. it's like, it's like, like really high level people, and like mm -hmm. it's like as a, a beginner, it was like, how am I gonna go up there and like dance like right. when this guy just did freaking three turns in one yeah in one, 100%. <laughs> one but that's yeah. why it's so cool that there's some um, levels there's levels right yeah and, and honestly i i'm 
hoping and probably going to expect that the urban kids, the Jack and Jills in this con- in the U.S., are going to get even more well, like better, well organized, U- unified too. Unified, yeah. Because yeah. the what Every, is really cool in the right Zook now. scene is like the Bizuk people have the Jack and Jill set up to a T. Yeah. Like you cannot go to, you can't just become an advanced like you participant. Have you have to gain points in all of these novice like Jack and Jill competitions to then move up to intermediate, and then from intermediate, then yeah. you can go up to advanced. Like, yeah. if, if you, you can't just self-assign yourself unless you go to, to the council from what they've told me. Right? You have to go to the council and try to, like, audition to get into that higher level. Yeah, okay. so that's why. So they have, like, a council for if, everything. And they if, have a council, yeah. Yeah, if you want to learn more about the Zook and the Jack and Joe, you should talk to Elijah and Dini here. Yes. Because they're very high-level Jack and Joe competitors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They might get their info. Uh, yeah, yeah. They'll absolutely. Their info. They've, they won. Will <laughs> They've won a yeah. couple. Mm-hmm. Or, you know. Still. And, and they place, started hosting place, yeah. too the, one of the competitions for um, for the Bizuk world, world. I think world it's called B- yeah World Champions here in Phoenix. Right. In the last like two years, yeah, so yeah. it's it, again we don't really know too much on that side, but yeah. right, right, we right, can definitely connect you with them. Yeah. 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 Um, so. I guess I was supposed to ask this beforehand, but like, what? Who was Ross and Jahira before <laughs> all, <laughs> yeah, all, all the Saltandi and like yeah. before you guys danced? Like, well, what's your guys' background? What you guys do? Um, well, it's funny because you already found all the, the yeah. dirt on them. <laughs> I know, I know <laughs> what they're about, but, <laughs> but like, what, what do I not yeah. know that's not on the internet, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's not on the internet? Yeah. Well, maybe you don't. Oh. Or, 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 <laughs> it's not on the internet. Don't say that. Well, that's what <laughs> let I, me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, that's uh, <laughs> Just uh, whatever you want to talk about, really. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. What, do you want? what do you want? Yeah, you tell your background. What Outside yeah. of dance, you know? That's so funny. Uh, yeah, I always get like... I don't know. I I always don't know what to say. Sometimes I'm like I sh- I'm just me, but <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, just your like how's your, like how's your family? Like are you really family oriented? Do you, oh yeah. How was your life growing up? And what did you do? Where'd you go to college? And like what'd you do? Yeah. Because I know college was a huge part of you. Well, you're a professor now, so obviously like yeah. Being, <laughs> that's that's yeah. why I'm Yeah. 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 A professor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, so I'm from Jersey, right? I was born and raised in Jersey until I was, like, 13, and then we moved out here to Arizona. So I, like, grew, did a lot of my growing up in Arizona, but I'm definitely, like, from, like, Patterson, New Jersey. So if you, and if you know, you know that's, like, the hood, honestly, like, in terms of the state of Jersey. Uh, and then, but then when we moved out here, it was, like, a complete shock because, it's not, it was nothing like I had ever seen before, like brand new homes, like all these things. Cause we, my family like lives like, like outskirts of Phoenix. Right. Mm. Um, but like eventually when I moved to college, I decided I didn't want to go to this general state school here. I moved to Tucson, which is like two hours away from Phoenix. And just cause I wanted something different. And they had a really good science program. And at the time, I was, like, dead set to, to become a veterinarian because I really liked animals. Um, but, yeah, so that's what I went to school for. I did my undergrad in veterinary sciences, and then I did a minor in uh, physiological sciences, which is, like, human anatomy, not just animal anatomy. Um, and then I, and I got a full ride to, to go to college, which is really helpful because if not, I don't think I probably would have gone. Uh, so I did that. It's probably what you saw. Like, yeah, and then yeah, I won yeah. like little awards, like little science, like, so I had, like stuff. Like, list full of like freaking stuff, and it's just like six pages. Just oh, I did this, I did that. And I'm, like, yeah. It's like all right, cool, good for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, On my like LinkedIn, Tyler, yeah, Tyler, we get it. Tahir's just good at everything. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to like science stuff, sure, yeah. Tahir's very book smart. I am very mm. book smart, but when it comes to like. Life common skills. sense stuff. <laughs> I don't know why. You can't, I didn't take a course on that. So <laughs> like, I couldn't get an A or anything in that. Um, but then when it came down to it, I had to decide if I wanted to go to veter- veterinary school, which Arizona doesn't have one. Um, I don't know if they do now, but, uh, and at the time I just couldn't imagine myself going away. I had loved Tucson, my experience, my family. So I decided, okay, let me do something different. And I was doing this, like, uh, like I won an award <laughs> to, like, start doing research. 
uh, using this undergrad research program that was geared towards minorities. And because like, as a one, as a minority, you really don't see many people in science, especially when I was growing up. And so they had this special program, like, hey, if you're doing really well in school, we can give you money to do your own research project in an actual lab, like a science lab at the university. And so I did that, and then the, it's called a PI, the principal investigator, who's the lead scientist, she liked me so much that she gave me a job uh, on my senior year of college. So I was doing that, and I was, it was super fun, honestly. I, like, I loved it so much that I decided I wanted to become a scientist, too. So that's what I went to school for. I went to grad school. I started a PhD program uh, in physiological sciences. That's what... Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that that's the one sense. that you found yeah, in yeah, LinkedIn was, like, and like, stuff. I don't know how I got to this point, but there's, <laughs> yeah. a, lot of, there's a lot more to this. No, yeah. It's dope, it's dope. yeah, and I, I loved it. I loved it so much, but like stuff happened, like life happens, and at the end of the day, I didn't finish that PhD program. I just got mm. my master's, um, and it was it's in pharmacology and toxicology, so like drugs and stuff like that, mm. right? Um, which I love, right? You know, <laughs> but then after that, like I had a friend and I was like, what am I going to do now? Like I already finished my master's. Like what can I do with, with a master's in science? Mm-hmm. And he told me about this position being an adjunct professor at a community college. And I, I, and I had done like tutoring and stuff like that. Like I loved doing that stuff with, with especially minority people because Again, like you don't see that many of us in the science fields. So, yeah. and I don't think I even ever had a female minority science professor. I think to that day, like a yeah. So oh, female, female, yeah, minority, minority science, science professor. professor. I don't think I had ever seen that mm-hmm. um, in Tucson, which has a high minority yeah. population too. So. I did that. I started like the adjunct professor, which is basically like a part-time professor Mm -hmm. by contract. And I loved it. Like I absolutely loved it. And that's like what I have been doing ever since then. Like I've never looked back. I've done other stuff too. Like, but that's the main thing that I've loved doing. And now I'm a full-time professor at a a nursing college here. So yeah, I'm just a science nerd, but I like to dance. (laughs) She's a science nerd that likes to dance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Ross? What you do? I'm from Seattle, and um, wow. I'm from Seattle. <laughs> I'm from Seattle. I, I moved here to Phoenix in 2019, so I spent most of my years up in the Northwest, except for when I went to grad school in Michigan. Um, I also started as a PhD student and then dropped out and got my master's. That's why so. you work so well together. <laughs> if if you want to get a master's and you want to get it paid for, sign up as a PhD student yeah. and then just finish when you have a master's. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. That's, that's, that's very true. That's, that's called big big mind thinking right there. <laughs> big, <laughs> big, yeah. big, big brain. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I'm uh, um, I work as a mechanical engineer as a small startup. So. Uh, we make pool equipment, but honestly, my work is like my work, and that's kind of all it is to me. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, that's me, and uh, half the time sh- she wins. Okay. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> so you don't like your job as much as you hire. <laughs> you know, it's um, uh, there. I like parts of it. I like the challenge. I like the the problem solving. And what we're doing is really interesting. It's it's really new in the market that we're in. Um, but I find most of my enjoyment like outside of my work. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I noticed that like you focus a lot on like efficiency and like just yeah. whether it be financial or like product or Everything. productivity. And then you, um, a lot of your stuff was like about like teaching and learning. And mm-hmm. I think you guys both bring that aspect to Saltandi. And I just want to know like how has that helped you guys? Like those specific traits have how have they helped you to create your company? Mm-hmm. And what do you? Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, so Jahira, uh, it's good to have Jahira because she always reminds me that not everything has to be so serious. Uh, so, like, when we train and when we write choreo and when we teach, I'm very, like, regimented. Mm-hmm. And I'm very used to just doing, like, repetition and repetition and repetition. I don't, I personally don't really care if it feels dry or boring because that's what I'm used to doing. 
Yeah. I'm used to, I mean, that's how you generate skills, and that's me, you know, if you ever played instruments growing up, like, I'd sit there and I'd play the guitar and I'd do the scales over and over and over again. So, in that sense, it's been really good because I bring that aspect to it, and Jahira mm-hmm. brings, like, like um, you know, her skill as a teacher. How can I, how can we communicate, communicate the efficiency that I want in the right way so it impacts the yeah. people? And how can we make it and turn it in a way that's also enjoyable? Mm-hmm. Because because her job, teaching is her job. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's true. Like, like it, when you take a class, whether it's, like, high school or, like, college, like it doesn't matter, like, any kind of even, or a dance class, right? If you have an instructor who is speaking in a monotone voice yeah. <laughs> and just saying, this is the, this is the trick. This, this is, is the, the move. turn. Right, <laughs> like this is the inside one, turn. Two, three, like no it's not a, right. It's not enjoyable. It's not enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. So how do you get that engagement so that it's a actual conversation instead of you lecturing at someone? Yeah. Nobody likes that. Right. Who learns from people just being lectured at, uh, from someone being lectured at? Right. You you don't. Mm-hmm. You'd have to like listen to it again or read the textbook again or like try like practicing it again and it just doesn't work versus if you have them engaged the entire time and trick them into learning <laughs> trick, <laughs> yeah. trick them into learning yeah and then all of a sudden without them thinking they've just acquired this new skill yeah. or knowledge yeah and so that's that's what i do at my job right she tricks her students i trick my students yeah. into liking chemistry yeah so <laughs> <laughs> and they'll tell me like i hated it but i loved this class like yeah. Hmm. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. That that's what I hope. What people when they take our workshop or our class, they'll see like, oh wow, I didn't even think I would like doing this move or this leg lift, but all of a sudden I'm here doing it and I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah. So, sure. I think that's where we balance each other out. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what do you, what do you guys see like Santandi or like the kids uh, community like five years or like in the future? What do you guys mm-hmm. what do you guys hope for? That's uh, that's a oof. big. I know. I honestly would love to have more teams, higher skill level dancers, like the people that are with us now still with us in five years. Yeah. Like that would be like that would be cool. a, an amazing point to reach. Yeah. Being able to not have it just be us doing all these things, but having people that are building themselves to be better dancers, but are also taking on these responsibilities. Like having like directors eventually to mm-hmm. this team would be amazing, and we're getting there. Like right. we have like one or two people that we're really like trying to give them these highlights and spotlights, so that if we're traveling to a festival, we don't have to cancel anything because there's still right. core people there that will continue the event or the class, right. and that's happened a couple times already. And so we're again slowly getting there, but I hope in five years we have like an even bigger group yeah. of people yeah. that are supporting us. I mean, ideally, we, you know, for the, for the company goals could be like, we have our Jack and Jill competition team, mm-hmm. and we could have multiple levels on that, novice, intermediate, advanced people. But then we'd also, I think we'd also like to have performance and choreo teams mm-hmm. because we have Urban Kids choreos, mm-hmm. solos. Mm-hmm. We have one team choreo, mm-hmm. but we could, you know, you could have multiple levels there. Yeah. Uh, an open level, an yeah. intermediate level, an advanced level. Yeah. So right there, there's six teams. And there's also different styles. Like I said, there's all those different components of this, of our scene. But mm-hmm. you can have classes and weekly classes and yeah. series on. Like the Terashinya, the Terasho. Yeah. You know, if we if we found someone who could really teach Kidomba or we could learn those skills and we can teach Kidomba. So there's lots of opportunities to grow and build mm-hmm. something that's really strong locally right yeah yeah Mm -hmm. but also too like like i know that from ross's side he wants this to be more than like just a side hobby yeah right and he's very adamant about that yeah i was gonna ask you about that like how do you guys see yeah like do you guys see yourself um that just it becoming just a bigger even like making income or just making a bigger Mm -hmm. just as a business owner, or because you guys are the founders, you know, like, mm-hmm. that's something that you guys have in mind. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. yes. That's simply, yes. So what, what, yeah. Okay, so for people who, you know, are curious about that, what does it take in a way, or what do you ha- have seen? Because you mentioned, you know, you only get, like, one or two people, you know, in, yeah. in the mm-hmm. yeah. 
yeah. and I know that's tough just mm-hmm. like like on, on like for business just seeing that but you guys stuck through and that's actually really like um, impressive and like just knowing because I've been I've, I know like how it is to like start and then um, you know having to go through that progression so yeah. Um, yeah so like what do you what have you seen uh, has helped you out just getting through that yeah so um, you know if you want to build a community or you want to build a company or whatever you know, let's st- st- if you stay relevant to dance, if you want to build a, a dance community, and all you're doing is teaching one, cl- one class of one hour a week and you throw up a flyer, or you're teaching a class in front of somebody else's social, you're not really doing enough. Like, yeah. the opportunities aren't there. People want to get better and they want to be a part of something, you know, and, you know especially when the dance, the dance scene, um, it, what's the word, attract, no, it's market is generally people outside of school. Right, mm. and when you get out of college, a lot of people lose that aspect of community and and determination or working towards something. Mm. So the biggest thing that we saw to jumpstart was doing things beyond just a weekly class. So that was we started doing our our choreos, our solos around. We did team video projects with choreos. We did choreo projects. Mm-hmm. We did social uh, socials. They were like monthly socials. Monthly socials. We did our team choreos at at local socials, mm-hmm. and we did them at non kids socials. So we did them at salsa bachata socials, yeah. where they weren't even playing kids music, mm-hmm. you know. So we were there. We did yeah. at the university festival, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. which yeah. was huge. Latin soul. Latin yeah, soul. soul. Yeah. Um, and then we also we hosted a, a desert kids hosted a weekender, mm-hmm. so we had some two out of state people come. And yeah. that was huge. Yeah. And then we announced our team. And I literally right. sat down and I made a list of like the 30 people I thought would be interested. And I messaged all of them. Like, like, hey, individually. Individually. Right. So it was like, and that's how we got the amount of people we got. Mm-hmm. Um, what else am I missing? Oh, I have a question. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, about I'm, time. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I've been He's observing. He's observing. He's all new to me. So yeah, yeah. I'm just like listening. So... For those who don't know, so you say the scene is pretty much kind of dead here in Phoenix, and you're small. trailblazing. Small. Yeah, small. We use the word small. Yeah. It's, it's not dead. It's that small. It, it used to be dead, but now it's, yeah. now it's, it's growing. growing. <laughs> yes. right. It's up and coming. Up yeah, and so coming. domestically in the States, um, what, well, let's just start with the festivals. Are there any, like, big festival that if people are interested to just go yes. travel and see if they go to salsa mm-hmm. bachata congresses like are there any that you'd like to shout out yeah. or just to let people be exposed to that yeah I just like going to those congresses just yeah there's definitely a to. couple um only urban kids kizomba mm-hmm. festivals yeah and like those are the ones that i think we love the most right the, right. the one that's coming up this this weekend mm-hmm. wh- whenever this is going to get posted it's probably past but it, it's neo kids mm-hmm. that's the one in texas austin texas okay. mm-hmm. and that one has been one of the longer running urban kids kizomba festivals mm-hmm. um because it's happened since i think 2017 2018 yeah this whole style of dance is pretty new but that's an older festival, festival that has a really good reputation mm-hmm. of bringing in artists from all over the world and within the U.S. So that's the one that our team is training to go to. Okay. We always recommend anyone who's any, like starting and has like a decent basic value, but even if they don't have any like foundations in that style, they can learn it at this festival. Right. Right. And the, the social dancing is phenomenal. Okay. So yes. that's yeah. the like probably the closest one here that we have. Okay. And the other one. Uh, there's, I, got, I got the list. So <laughs> we're going to Boston Kizomba Festival. Yeah, in we went Labor Day. Boston Kizomba. Huge, huge, really amazing, good. amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, then in December there's uh, One Kiz. One Kiz is also which is also in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, there's a couple in Canada that are really big. Yeah. So there's the I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right the Kizo Fest in Montreal, which happened a couple of weeks ago. Kizo, yeah. Um, oh, I'm blanking. Oh. There's one in Chicago this year called Afro Summer. Afro Love Fest. Summer, yeah. Super. That one's super good. We haven't been to that one, but mm-hmm. you can you can tell by the roster and the people. It's it's really highly rated. Yeah. Um, 
Like there's so there's that's like there's a lot. That's a good number. That's yeah. enough to keep you busy the whole year. Miami DFF is happening later Labor Day. Yes. Um, there's also like a decent number of SBKs that have like okay lineups. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or really good lineups. Like Denver, this Denver last year was super good. Yeah, Denver. Like the, the it SBK. felt like we were at a kids festival. It was like was the room was packed. Mm-hmm. They had the right, they had the right artists there. Yeah. So I don't know if y'all are going to Denver this year. Yeah. The Vega accounts line up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got you. The come through. Denver, Denver, Denver SBK does it really well. So. It's very good. It's very, very, good. very good. Mm-hmm. It's like almost like a super congress, and we know mm-hmm. the organizer. He's so awesome but like they always make sure that when they put a k in sbk that it's actual it's a real k it's a real k sometimes they're like oh yeah there's a there's a kizomba room is what they call it but then it's there's nobody there or something i guess yeah and we'll be uh, teaching our workshop there so you know (laughs) best way to say the there's like talk your shit like what's what's the what's the issue with the putting a k Um, in like and those things and what do you guys have against it and maybe well I just feel like people don't you know from just from you know because we're mostly attendees to a lot of the SBKs and, um, oh Atlanta SBK did it awesome this oh year. yes yes mm-hmm. super good Atlanta SBK yeah that was a great we one. also recommend that one yeah that one and mm-hmm. um, it's not a festival but if you go up to Seattle there's frequent events in Seattle that are amazing amazing yeah uh, and they're done very differently. So yeah. mm-hmm. keep an eye on Seattle. It's huge. Um, so the thing with the SBKs is they'll put SBK, but, you know, the the lineup or the people supporting, they're not people that are really within the Urban Kids community. Or community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we're, like, that's that community will only go out to an SBK and pay that money if they know that they're going to be good dancers. Yeah. Right. Good dancers, good instructors, good instructors, or good DJs. Yeah, DJs and that are, makes DJs, a big difference. DJs are like invaluable in the yeah. kids. Like they, they are so important. Yeah, Someone I don't think who I've knows ever the music met. And know how to mixes and yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've ever met a DJ and uh, someone who who classifies themselves as an urban kids DJ that presses play. Never. No, they they, they have like mix. live mix. They have music. to mix all the music together. Yeah. And that's not always what you see with the other styles. That's that's why so, if you ever dance kids, you dance you will dance with somebody for like you could dance with them for thirty minutes. Like you don't know like sometimes you don't know when like, the song ends. The song every looks song like it doesn't end. <laughs> yeah. Is that good or bad? Yeah. <laughs> to us, this is good. Oh yeah. It depends. It depends. No, it's, it depends. It's different it depends. because. Yeah. It depends because if you dance with someone that you don't really like and you leave after one song, it's like it's yeah. like a yeah. it's like oh yeah. well. So. Also, too, the etiquette in da- that this style yeah. of dance is different, right? Like when you dance like salsa, yeah. how many times do you dance with that person like back to back? Oh, never. Like never. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see ya. Yeah, maybe two if you're really feeling it. But that's normal. No one's going to get offended if you only dance with them once. Yeah. But mm-hmm. in this style of dance, you dance with someone three to four songs minimum. Minimum. Mm-hmm. Minimum. Because that's how long it takes to establish mm-hmm. connection. Three to four songs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's a lot. It, so, takes, it takes a while for you, especially if it's with somebody new, new. for you to understand how they follow or how they lead or That's what they crazy. like yeah. so you give you give a couple yeah. songs of a learning it's experience like, it's like building rapport like yeah, yeah. Day, exactly yeah, yeah. Like yeah. three or four days yeah you, <laughs> you gotta go you gotta go <laughs> three or four <laughs> days no literally so um after class yesterday i was hanging out with some of my social dance friends i was telling them oh yeah in vegas i was dancing with a couple of these falls for like seven songs straight oh my god <laughs> in vegas <laughs> so much in them, vegas. But, yeah and they're like, why would you do that? I'm like, I don't know. Like, they didn't say anything. We just kept dancing. Like, yeah. Yeah, so. They must have thought you really they, liked them. Yeah, so now I got to try out Urban Kids. Yeah. yeah. I have a legit excuse yeah. this time, no. <laughs> there are no. some There's some positives to having yeah. it that way. But at the same time, like, if you have a if you have an imbalance, like, the kids scene has mostly follows, then, then follows will be sitting out for a long time. Yeah. That sucks. And that's not fun. Yeah. So we need to head over three leads. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 yes. 
<laughs> the numbers as, are as long good. as you come for the dance. As long as you come for the dance. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, as long yeah, as you yeah, come yeah. for the dance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now we got we got to lead them. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> you got to you learn. You got to lead, lead them. Yeah. Lead them. Yeah. Oh, uh, I also was gonna ask, um, what cities or states is Irving Kids? Prominent in, uh, that you've seen because yeah. yeah, you guys yeah. say you travel a lot, right? Yeah, are there like or internationally? I don't know. Is it bigger elsewhere than Phoenix? Uh, I'm assuming well, right? in, general, yeah. in general, it's much bigger in Europe, in Europe, much, yeah. much bigger. Yeah, so we that's so that's why we're kind of in this deficiency in comparison to Europe in the US, but there's some there's some states that are pretty good, like Texas. because they're higher in population. Um, or it's just they've had really good instructors there for a long time. Texas is huge. Yeah, there are multiple festivals in Texas. That are specifically like Specifically Dallas. Right. Yeah. yeah. Is Texas like the New York like equivalent for like salsa kind of or uh, not? Mm, or would you look at I some? I would say some, yeah. I, I yeah. can't say. I, yeah. It, I mean. Like it has the peak. Not like in terms of um, instructors, but in terms of events. They have yeah. a lot of events. They have a lot of events. The East Coast in general has a lot more events than the West Coast yeah. does, with the exception mm -hmm. of Seattle. Yeah, right. Like, okay, okay. which helps because Ross's okay. family is from Seattle, so we'll go visit them. But yeah. then we'll also go dance. The hotel themes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I know that there are there are other places that get it, attract a lot of people with their local stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, I think San Francisco does pretty well, but we we just haven't been there yet. Really yeah, to days. like. Same voice thing for that. like L.A. and San Diego. You'll see some events and. On the yeah. East Coast, uh, there's a good group in New York, but then I think something in North Carolina that's mm. pretty constant. So. Yeah, but there's definitely like a couple of areas that yeah. you could travel to and be able to find right. at least a weekly event, social or something that you yeah. could you could attend. In addition to the classes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned something about follows and oh yeah we um oh yeah yeah we would, yeah I guess like, I'll just show you the the clip and then you guys can. Sure. You guys can say your thoughts. We'll probably put the clip up real quick. But. I went to. So I went to one year. Oh, I didn't have any dance like two times. This is like my first time going. So it's real. It's real. Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, seeing it so weird because it's like all the men are pretty much black. But the people getting asked to dance from the follow side was. They were white. Like white women, and that's when I first started to notice it, and it was something weird was going on. <laughs> I remember. Oh, so I guess that's that's the main clip, like. Yeah. And that I find it interesting just because, like, a neither of you guys, are, you're not a white woman and you're not a, a black I, man, so it's I'm like not no, a black. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you think you guys didn't know? That's why you don't know. No, uh, but, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, yeah, but that that aspect, okay, like, well. A, you guys are kind of making a new, like a a new scene here in in Phoenix. So it's like the norm is like different. And also like, what about this? Like, what do you guys think about like the fact that there's um, black male black male leads and mm -hmm. a lot of white female follows? Yeah, I will say that in terms of like the women who get selected to dance. Sometimes it's only based on their appearance, which is really sad in my in my opinion, right? I have a lot of my female friends who have come to me and literally cried because they didn't get asked to dance very much. And it was because they were bigger, right? Or they were not white, right? So it sucks, it sucks. I was also a very, a much bigger person before um, and I did not get asked to dance very much either. Um, but like speaking from like their experiences and stuff, like it sucks because like when people ask you to dance, like one of the reasons is because like they're trying to hit on you sometimes, mm -hmm. especially if it's like at a thing that's like a bar mm -hmm. and dance yeah, event, not just at a studio, right? <clears throat> okay. And that's where these issues come up. And a hundred percent, like I've seen it before, it sucks, right? But what we can do is as people who are leads here, right? we can try and make that change, change. that yeah right. right so it doesn't devalue the experiences that like my friends and i have had um but we can try and make it better right and make sure that we're asking everyone to dance mm -hmm. right unless they make you uncomfortable mm -hmm. right? right but if that's not the case 
we should be asking everyone to dance, whether they're super amazing dancers or beginners, because at some point, every single dancer has been a beginner. Right. I feel like, you know, as leads, the, for the most part, we ask the people that we see dancing the most and that people are easily accessible and right on the dance floor, right? right. So because there's this um, tendency uh, uh, to not have black, you know, to have ask white women to dance mm -hmm. and not black women, I, I have found myself just asking the people who are dancing the most and I have to catch myself and say, hey, like there are people sitting that want to dance. You mm -hmm. need to go ask them. And the perspective that really changed for me was when we started teaching and instructing and hosting socials and having a team. It was like, look, everybody on our team, we need to make sure that they're dancing mm -hmm. as much as you can every night. So it's like now it's just, it's just second nature for me to just, I will just ask whoever, you know, I don't even, I don't even really think about it. Yeah. So. But I don't think it, that happens until you get called out or you see it or you put yourself right. in yeah. those positions. Because you might just be unaware that it even happens. Have you been yeah. called out before or why? No, why, I haven't been called just, out. No, no. no I'm, <laughs> just, I'm just asking like, I'm just asking like, yeah, oh, yeah, like yeah. How, how did you notice that? No, that's, that's, no. Uh, I mean, I just, like, I, I personally don't notice, didn't notice that because it's just not something I'm, like, I'm observing or looking out for. Mm -hmm. But... Jahira has always been expressive of that me before, and we get exposed to, to other people who express that. And, yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, and I've told them about like some of my friends' experiences yeah. in the past. Right. Like, hey, we need to make sure this person is dancing because they deserve to have just as good of yeah. a time, you know? Yeah. yeah, an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, and then the other thing, too, that was mentioned in the video was the big difference between lead and follows. And that's something that happens in the U.S. However... A lot of the urban kids festivals are now selling lead specific passes and follow specific passes. Yeah, where when you purchase those passes, like they have a certain ratio. So if they run out of like they only have, say, 20 leads that they purchase the passes, they, they can't sell more than like 30 uh, follow passes. Yeah, yeah. Genius. yeah. yeah. and because and it's because it's happened before. I don't yeah. know when when she had this. Um, this event happened, but the, uh, it's... Sawa Sawa, she said on the Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the Sawa Sawa, yeah. And, like, you know, it. unfortunately, these things happen, but I think right. as the organizers get better, they start yeah. seeing, okay, we can't just let anyone buy passes because mm -hmm. then we're left with these really terrible ratios. And maybe in other styles of dance, it's not something that's an issue, but in this style, it is. Mm -hmm. And... Once you start placing those limits, it makes everyone who currently has those festival passes, they can enjoy the festival because they yeah. don't have to worry about like yeah. fighting for the next lead or anything yeah. like that because yeah. nobody wants to do that. Right, and I mean also, you, you guys said that it takes three to four songs. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. That, that's one of the things that I don't, per, like, I don't particularly like about dancing for so long is that there are people that have to sit out for a long period of time. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I think mm -hmm. it would be interesting because it's just me. No, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> can dance with everybody. <laughs> like, no, I can yeah. multiply myself. <laughs> I know. If only, that'd be fun. <laughs> well, he, he, he's, he's multiplying himself, but and with the team. That's what he's doing. Mm, right? Yeah, right. there you go. There, there you go. go. All right. yeah. Dropping that big bang, big bang, big bang. Big bang. Big bang. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I think it, it's an interesting conversation because that the whole dynamic. Uh, Alvin mentioned this earlier that the songs are like. First off, I love the fact that like as a as a as a lead, at least in my experience. I see dance as a conversation, so you know it's 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 interesting to see like multi dancing multiple songs. You're build it, it's a you're developing a connection right there. Oh crap. Yep. So you're developing a connection, and then um, is it good? All right, cool, cool. So you're developing a connection, and the you're giving yourself more time to to basically build that rapport, um, and you're getting to know a person a lot more versus like you go to the salsa bachata. It's only one song, and mm -hmm. like you don't, you don't really, like maybe in that song you didn't connect, but in the next one you, you probably could have, but you don't mm -hmm. get that chance in in that community. Uh, that's just something I want to mention. But also, um, it's interesting because I think one of the reasons why there's only a select uh, amount of follows that are chosen is because I've seen it in in the salsa bachata community. Like there's been times where there's follows that are sitting down. And either because they're, they're either like pros and they're intimidating or they, people just don't know them. 
uh, for example, I've gone on, I've gone and asked them, and then people see them dance, and then oh, now that they saw them dance, now they're gonna go ask them because yeah. they, yeah. they saw that they had a good time. Yeah. And I was like, and that's a part of the, that's a part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Like if we if we can talk about these things, then we're then uh, people can grow like you know they they see they see that and they understand oh like that is happening. Mm-hmm. Like we're in a way vetting people to see oh yeah. is that person gonna have a good dance? Like I'm not gonna take the chance. Or yeah. right now I'm enjoying this. I'm not gonna take the chance and ask other mm-hmm. people because. Also here in Arizona, I've had people that I don't see them get asked to dance. I go ask them, and it turns out to be great. They're from out of town. They're like, right. actually like pros, and I'm like, what? Yes. Like, this is awesome. This is amazing. Exactly. But, um, you like, never know, though. You never know. You exactly. Never know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's ha- that happened to me before at a yeah. local dance here. Um, I asked somebody to dance, and she said she said no, and I danced with somebody, and then literally the next song, it was a it was a salsa, mm-hmm. social. She comes up to me. She goes. Oh, you know, would you like to dance? I just wanted to see. Uh, oh. And she, she, she said something like, "I just wanted to." You know, I'm really cautious, and I don't want to dance with anybody who maybe makes me uncomfortable. I, like, I wanted to see what type of dance you were, mm. uh, which is like interesting. I was yeah. really, if, I felt weird because I felt judged, but at the same time, I was like, "That's a, that's an understanding thing yeah. to want to make sure." That's you know, mm-hmm. she doesn't want to dance with somebody that's going to be creepy, mm-hmm. but then it's like. You know, I, I did feel like I mean, I'm, I'm being judged even when I'm just social dancing. It's mm-hmm. strange. <laughs> I always say though, it's it's kind of hard though as a follow in the in the salsa bachata scene because sometimes people are just so rough, yeah, and that's true. like you can get hurt, right? Or people try to dip you, and I'm like, listen, I'm not trying to be dipped. <laughs> like yeah. I hate I hate she dips of dips. all types. Yeah. So when people try to dip me, I squat. Can you explain why? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, Well, one, I have a back injury right now Mm. that I'm recovering from, but also, too, like, not everyone knows how to dip. And I've seen it before where people have fallen. Right, or they don't know how to dip. Yeah, we've seen that. And you yeah, know, and you know, it's it's a give and take. Like if you're gonna, if a lead is going to dip a follow, the follow should know how to hold her weight, right, or the yeah. follow's weight. But also, the lead should also know how to dip so that they're not being placed off their weight, right, right their balancing yeah. point. So I know I can hold my weight, but do I know this random person is going to yeah, do sure. that? Right. So unless I know them, I usually will, will avoid that. Yeah, just out of safety, right? Because if I'm injured, then I'm out for weeks or months at a time, and we have we have stuff we got to do. <laughs> yeah, we, we the last couple of weeks we had to we had to be really cautious about what we were doing because mm-hmm. she was dealing with this back thing. Yeah. So I was like, we were getting ready for a show, and we had to wait till like a week before to rehearse something that we normally you know, would prepare we, a we lot. We would be preparing all the time for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. So just protect myself, protect the lead too. Like, you know, if I don't know what I'm doing and they're trying to do something, you know, I want to make sure that I don't injure them. Yeah. Right? It's give and take. Right. Yeah. So I refuse to dip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to bring up so um, on the Instagram page, I know a few, well, I guess for. I've just heard that some female artists that are follows, they tend to be more cautious. I think that ties into mm-hmm. if they haven't been led by this person, or I, especially if it's your job, you'd be more cautious just dancing with someone yeah. randomly. But I think especially communicating like, hey, I'm not going to do any dips, or if I have a neck yeah, injury, yeah. I'm not going to do any head Head-ups. rolls. Yeah. We talked about it in class for yeah. the sensual for class. sensual experience. With oh, them. yeah. yeah. Rachel. Oh, <laughs> Denny and Rachel. Denny and Rachel. We love them. The best sensual bachatas in Phoenix. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tag no. him like, Denny, you better watch more than five minutes of this podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I get it. But, and uh, funny enough, I was talking to my friends yesterday after class, and we mentioned this at the... S- at socials or congresses, like I, for a lead, I know a lot of guys. Not how do I word this where I don't. So, a lot of older women they tend to sit out at the socials that I know, or even congresses, and they should be asked to dance unless if it's a bad experience or something. And whether we like to admit it or not, based on a follows appearance, if they happen to be women, they tend to be selected 
more or ask more to dance. And um, that being said, yeah, everyone should be able to dance. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that, it's, that that's a reality. That yeah, it, it's true. You know, they I, could be amazing dancers, but if they're not. I know. You know they might be a little bit heavier. They might mm-hmm. be older, and then will they get asked as much as? someone that's younger and mm-hmm. attractive and mm-hmm. who can't dance because right yeah you'll run into True. those people and yeah. they'll still get asked more on average yeah, yeah. So, most of the time they're getting yeah dance with everybody yeah. Yeah. especially for leads it's yeah, your absolutely. imperative mm-hmm. dance with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and just ask like just be you know a kind person just like hey yes. would you like to dance because right. i've also like seen leads who asks follows to dance, whether it's female or male follow, right, or anything, yeah. it, like, as, as a follow, like, they'll just, like, come up and grab you. <laughs> like, this person I was talking to, like, I was having a conversation with a friend, and this person just came up, not not in this scene, not, not in the Phoenix scene. I, I think we were at a festival or uh, at another event somewhere else. They just grabbed me, and they started pulling me, and I was like talking to this person, and I don't know this. But it's not like it was oh, a friend, yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah. if it's friend friendly, it's like you know, it's a friend like, that it's one thing. You 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 would have to have that repertoire, right? right? But this person just came up to me out of nowhere, and I just looked. I'm like, excuse me, no. Jeez. And what was their reaction? And they're like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> what do you mean no? Yeah. What do you mean no? God. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not how you ask anyone, right, right, right. but also not me. Yeah. And so then I was walking away. I was like, okay, okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm like, I don't care. Just, right. <laughs> the fact that you didn't say, you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, like, oh, I, you know, I like if you, if it's allowed, I understand sometimes you can't hear, right? right but you yeah. can just like, hey. Like, time, there's yeah. just being a kind person, right, in any aspect. Like, wh- when you're asking, like, when you're done dancing, like, you should be kind because no matter what's going on, that person's still a person. Right. 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think we're good right here, so we're going to start wrapping it up. But yeah. before we finish, do uh, you guys mind saying your socials or, like, anything you guys want to shout out or want to plug in real yeah, quick before we finish? Yeah, people find you? Where find you? On this amazing jersey, it's called Sultandi. Oh, I was going to oh. mention. Where yeah, the what, 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 yeah, what is yeah. the name? Where, yeah, <laughs> I, I forgot about that question. What does it mean? Yeah. What does it it's mean? not salt and die, although that's how you would spell it. <laughs> uh, Sultandi is Latin, right? And the direct translation can mean like to jump or to dance. And because we dance several different styles that are uh, in terms of music that are Spanish based or Portuguese based French. like or French based right there's a lot of Portuguese and French songs especially in urban kids but we also do right salsa and bachata which is mostly Spanish this encompasses all of those languages because all those languages are Latin based so that's where this name comes from yeah and then this so is our Salta- Instagram handle we're, too. we're Saltandi dance so we're dance dance Dance, dance. Double dance. So our our Instagram is saltandi underscore dance. Mm-hmm. Uh, so follow us there. You yes. can follow. What's your personal? Just Jahira. J a h a i r a. And mine's Ross dot DeGiulio. You can spell it. But um, <laughs> but before we go, we want to shout out a couple of things. Yes. Um, uh, the Urban Kids here in Phoenix, it's it's doing well and there's a lot of momentum. So if you want to tag along, uh, we just want to give credit to a lot of the, the people that have been working really hard that are mm-hmm. beyond just us. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, Destiny uh, and Fernando, our partners at Desert Kids. Yeah, Desert K-I-Z. They we have our own Instagram that does weekly classes that are right. drop-in based, no partner needed. Yeah, Wednesdays from 8 to 9.30. Yes. So check that out. There's also um, Mike and Nikki mm-hmm. who were teaching pre-COVID and they are actually teaching at NeoKids yes. and they were teaching the Kizomba Club at the U of A. Uh, no, ASU. ASU. Oh, ASU, excuse me. Don't associate us with yeah. them. It's all right. Um, it's all right. We you know, so they, U of A versus you know, they, ASU, They're always no. supportive and have done a lot of work and that's where a lot of the community. current communities come from Mike and Nikki. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and then Tonino and Julia, who are, you know, really good Kizomba teachers, Tonino DJs, our socials and everything. So there's a... Yeah, there's they're a, a Kizomba Phoenix. Kizomba and they Phoenix. have their own Facebook and Instagram too. Kizomba yeah. Phoenix Dance Company. Yeah. Yes. So there's a lot of people that are, that are, you know, doing this with us. Right. Yeah. It's not just us. So yeah. 
uh, we're lucky. We're lucky to have them, and and we're excited for for the next couple. We have a, a really big next couple months for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our second season starting in August. Yes. Auditions in August, so check that out. Yeah, we'll uh, be posting a reel pretty soon, and it'll give like info and information. Yeah. And if you follow us on this Instagram page, you'll have that insight or share it with people. That's really how we get um, more people to learn about what we do is word of mouth or now like word of mouth through social media. Yeah. Shout out to Leeds. There's a need. Yes. Shout out to Leeds. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. See y'all next one. Bye. 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 Bye.